going to the adventure on Pumlet on W four C Y. Where he Wake up, America! It's time for the adventures of Hype Man on W4CY.com, West Palm Beach's number one internet radio station. Here's your host, the Hype Man. Adventures Pipe Man W4CY Radio, and I'm here with Tim Montana from Montana by God. Nice. How'd that work out? That was such a coincidence. Yeah, Savannah Montana's over there, and she doesn't enjoy it. She doesn't have a first name anymore, so. Uh oh. Yeah. So, question. Yes, sir. Nobody else in Press will ask you this question. Does Wyoming really exist? Is Wyoming what? Does Wyoming really exist? Do you it know does. that's a joke at, down here? Like, yeah, we it, have this joke does. that it doesn't really exist. The Tetons. I mean, it, I've been to Wyoming a lot. You know, you have to drive through there to get out of our state, pretty much. So, right. <laughs> <laughs> it, that's like an ongoing thing down here in Florida. People always say all the time, "Yeah, well, everybody says Wyoming, but I have no proof that Wyoming exists." <laughs> Go up there; it's beautiful. <laughs> it, it. You are in God's country. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. Like. I remember my brother went to Montana for the first time, and he was like, oh, my God, this is as close as you get to God as you can get. It's big sky country for a reason, and when the minute you pull in the state, you're just like, that's the most sky I've ever seen in my life. Right? Yeah, it's wild. And then we had the northern lights last night because of the solar flare. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, I didn't get to see it, but, man, it went right by my house. It just lit up the entire sky green. It was just light all night. So wow. I was like, you know, we're, we're definitely in the apocalypse, but it is beautiful. <laughs> right? Exactly. I would be kind of worried, like, why do we have the northern lights tonight here? Yeah, all the way as far south as Nashville, they saw it, because there's a massive solar flare that's happening. Yeah, I'm really into space and also conspiracy theories. I'm like, is it now? Is it now? Rockville, is this it? <laughs> yeah, it could have been. Imagine if it happened while you were on stage at Rockville. Like, it just came down and hit the stage. That's it. That, that would be the best show ever. And my single, Savage, is about the apocalypse. It'd be like, oh, man, I, I got the song. See? I wrote the theme song to it's the your end of fault. time. It's your fault. <laughs> I brought it on. Tell us about that new song. Yeah, man, it's uh, it's a really cool song. I don't want to brag on myself too much, but it's one of my favorites that I've written. We just released a music video yesterday, and we built, like, a 3D upside-down world if you the wow. upside down is a reference to that uh what's a uh, stranger things show right and so we built this apocalypto scene and, and i get to turn into a crazy tribalistic version of myself i got three of my four kids in there that look scary as hell nice and, uh, this 3d studio was wild so we made it like the apocalypse meets psychedelics and uh, the song's crushing that. right now at rock radio thank you guys for supporting it and crowds are going nuts for it so we're on the we're on tour with Stained and Seether right now. We actually missed a show tonight to drive from Grand Rapids, Michigan, straight through to here. Whoa. <laughs> that was a haul. That drive was very savage. I'm sure it was. So we got to Rock Rockville today, and then we're in uh, Greenville, South Carolina tomorrow, back with Stained, Seether, and St. Sonia. That's a badass tour right there. Yeah. And so if music were not an option, now what's your passion? Man, I'm was always a huge military fan. I'm too old for that now, but I actually do my other passions kind of as well. I own a, me and Billy Gibbons bought a historic lodge casino restaurant in the Big Hole Valley. So when I'm, Whoa. even when I'm on the road, like yesterday, we missed a Cisco sh shipment because of a snowstorm in Montana in May. The pass was closed. We didn't get any food. So my general manager calls me. What do I do, Tim? And I'm like, let me jump on the phone. So I was sourcing other food for the, the big weekend rush we have going on right now. So I, I get, I'm fortunate to be able to do several other businesses. You know, I, I like to hope someday I can be a rock and roll feller. <laughs> get I, it? <laughs> oh, man, that was good. That was the best dad joke ever. Oh, yeah. I got a lot of kids, so I'm full of dad jokes. There you go. I love that you involve your kids, too. Yeah. You know, because that, that's totally cool. 
Like, I have four kids, eight grandkids. Wow. I've brought already two of my grandkids into their first mosh pit ever. Yeah, yeah. And I always, like, bring them to cool places. You know, Yeah, and I try to put my better. kids in the videos so that we look back at dad's cool moments, and the, the kids are in there, too, at that age. You know, I mean, my mostly stone video, Charlie Sheen directed, which ultimately got me my record deal. My son portrays a young version of me. Then he went on to do the Devil You Know video. Then my other boy was like, Dad, I want to be in a video. And my little girl is too. And she wanted to be in a video. So then I got them all in the last video. Nice. The only one that won't be in the videos now is the teenage daughter. She's like, no, not doing it, Dad. You can't afford me. <laughs> oh, I can totally see that, But Dad. she's here today. She's Dad's biggest critic because she's like, Dad, can I bring a friend from my high school in Montana? We want to see the Foo Fighters and Primus. And I'm like... But do you want to see dad? And she's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, she'll be side it. stage going, boo. <laughs> right, right. I love it. You should you should have her come out and get, you know, get the crowd to say boo. <laughs> I know. I know. Right? She's the one that, she goes to the high school that I went to in Montana. Oh, so really? all of her teachers, a oh, large she must handful, hate that. were my teachers. And, and she, she does hate it because she's like, yeah, it's really cool when I go to history and it's study time and the teacher starts playing dad's music and he leans over and gives her a thumbs up and she's like no i i, I don't really want to hear my dad's music in every class every day <laughs> i could totally see that oh, yeah, and if so... i pick her up my sprinter van has my name and picture on the side you know marketing when we're on the highway she makes me pick her up down the street at uh... a restaurant because she doesn't want it in the high school parking lot because everybody will start hooting and hollering and she hates it <laughs> i love teenagers it's great oh yeah <laughs> What if she ends up the one that follows in your footsteps? She's That's usually that how it happens. She's the musical talent. She's got her piano. I got her a Stratocaster, which she misplaced the other day. And I was like, hey, honey, I grew up in a single wide trailer with no power in an outhouse. And for your birthday, I bought you an Eric Clapton signature yeah. Strat. And you can't find it? How do you lose a Strat? Right, especially that Strat. I'm like, I couldn't afford something like that till I was 30. And right? here's this little 16-year-old, hey, Dad, I lost my Clapton signature. By the way, who's Eric Clapton? I'm like, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> right? You know what? But that's what we did, okay? So we were those kids that we were the, you know, the latchkey, no parent parental supervision kids. Our parents didn't give us shit. We had to fight and claw for everything. So we want to give our kids everything right. that we never had. And then we realized after... That was a dumb move. Right, right. <laughs> I'm very worried about that. I'm like, man, growing up poor builds character. And no I doubt. didn't know I was poor until I grew up. And then I went out and I was like, oh, you guys had like TV and video games. And I was sitting in the woods uh, playing guitar at a candle and lantern light thinking I had it made. But you don't know what you don't know. Right. But now I'm like, I try to spoil my kids because I'm like, they're never going to have to go through that. But I'm like, oh, shoot, maybe they should. Guys, we're moving into a single wide for six months. <laughs> right. <laughs> They, Eating ramen noodles. I think of my kids, I'm like, they would never have gone through the stuff that I went through. Like, they just wouldn't handle it because. Yeah. And not because anybody could handle it, okay? But because I freaking spoon fed them and made it easy on them. Right. That's I, what I, I take I think the all the time, I look at my son's, uh, I think Walker's eight now and Dalton's 12. When I was six, I dug my first outhouse hole for the outhouse and then I had to drag it with a four-wheeler over the new hole my instructions were to dig it deeper than myself <laughs> and I had no help I had a crowbar and a chain and a winch and a four-wheeler and I would winch these giant rocks out of this massive hole in the earth took me about a week that was when I discovered stained I remember they came on the radio for the first time at a battery nice. operated radio player and I heard it's been a while and I was like this sucks I want to do music <laughs> but I like look at my kids and I'm like I don't think they'd be capable of doing that together. Right? <laughs> I exactly. I guess there's a different time, man. Oh, my God. I, you know, you're saying, <laughs> you're preaching to the choir, man. Oh, my God. It, I think about it now. I'm like, yeah, maybe my parents were right by being bad parents. Right, right. <laughs> And the drive to get a driver's license, too. Like, uh, were you like me the day, the day down time to the minute that you could legally have freedom? 100%. I was waiting outside the DMV at yeah. 15 and a half on my birthday. Like, forget the birthday party. Just get me to the DMV. The driver's ed instructor is one of our neighbors in remote Montana. And she's like, when's your daughter going to take the driver's test? And I'm like, Savannah, when are you going to take the driver's test? She's like, I don't know. 
And I'm like, what the hell? You're totally legal. You're 16. I had my learner's permit the day I could at 15. Different generation, man. I, I know they're going to live at home until they're 32. That's probably coming. That's well, that, next. that's that's Because the what... day I was actually, I moved out at 17. I'd had enough. I'm like, I'm out of here. I had a, kind of a bad situation with a stepdad, and I moved out, and it was the best thing I ever did, and moved in with a bunch of college kids and became a party house, and Right, then got to L.A. as soon as I could. I'm like, these guys are going to sit at home for a long time. But my wife actually doesn't mind that part. She's like, I want to keep them here as long as I can. Right. I'm like, I don't think that's healthy, but whatever. I'll roll with it. Well, <laughs> that's the way I look at it is even if I want them, because I wanted my kids to be with me, but that's not healthy. My daughter, my youngest daughter as an example, she made a decision that she wanted to go move in with her uh, boyfriend and, and go to college in Orlando because she could move in with her boyfriend. And then when that didn't work out, her mom sort of, call your dad, go back and live with your dad. And, go, and I said, nope. I'm um, like, you need to move forward, not backward. Right. You know, and you made a choice. And to me, it wasn't because I didn't want her there because that was a hard thing to say. Yeah, of course. I, I wanted her there. But I knew her coming back to her high school town – you know, after leaving, nothing good would come of it. Right. Nothing good right, would come right. of it, especially the people she used to yeah, hang out like with. People need to understand you got to go out and fail. You got to go out and miss. You got to go out and find rock bottom sometimes to, like, figure no out doubt. what you want to do with life and build this thing called work ethic. You know? Yeah, 100%. And, uh, I just hope the new generation of kids can figure that out. And I see some kids that especially where I live in Montana, that are very blue-collar and they're running businesses at 16 years old. Like They're still out there, right? That's those, good. Those little Power to kids them. are out there ranching. And I, there's a kid that lives down the street that butchers and processes his own lambs. Even nice. though I don't really need a lamb, I always support him. I'm like, I'll buy a half a lamb from you because I'm like, you're 16 and you have a butcher shop I in your love garage? it. <laughs> I just love that he's industrious at that age. Oh, yeah, that's badass. Yeah, I love it. When we were growing up, so. Exactly. And I also love that you're super supportive of the military. Absolutely, I have yeah. a son that's been in for almost 20 years. My son-in-law was in. My other daughter's boyfriend was in. I have a cousin that's been in for like almost 40 years now. Wow, that's amazing. And listen. One thing I have to say is, no matter who you are in the world, what your political beliefs are, you don't like war, whatever it is, always be pro-soldier because these people yeah. are doing things you're not willing to do to protect your right to not like those things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Paul, I mean, those doesn't matter who's president. Those guys have to wake up in the middle of the night, leave their families, and go get shot at. Like A hundred percent. All the time. Uh -huh. I mean... It's wild, and I've gotten really close with my American Thread Sporting Clay shoot. We've raised $1.1 in four years, and nice. we're all volunteer-based because some of these charity groups, I don't have time to go through their books and see mm. how much money they're keeping and how much they're giving. So me and all my buddies decided to do it on our own and do it completely volunteer. We don't make a dime. And we've had everybody from Aaron Lewis to Collective Soul to Kobe Calais come out and perform for free. And put eight kids through college that lost their dads in combat that. and it's become this really big thing and it just it feels it, it feels good a but it's it's our duty to serve those that serve us if you didn't serve you can serve in other ways by taking care of the men and women that are doing that so that we can enjoy our freedoms firm believer in that it's not a political statement that's no. a, america needs to get behind that idea and just a story that this last summer, we got invite to the, invited to the 160th hangar, which is SOAR, so they're the Special Forces pilots. They flew the guys in for the Bin Laden raid. They're the most specialized helicopter pilots in the world. They're out of Fort Campbell. And because I do the charity, they said, bring your sons up. Let's hang out. My little boys got to call in a bomb strike in the bomb field, and a Black Hawk came down and exploded a tank. Whoa. Coolest thing ever. And then the pilot landed. His name's Shane. And got pictures with him, this and that. All of a sudden, the conflict starts in Gaza. I see on the news that a Black Hawk helicopter went down in the Mediterranean. Oh. Shane got killed, him and his whole flight crew. Just four months before that, I was hanging out with my family, and I struggled with, do I tell my sons that? Because they looked at him like he was Superman, although they didn't know him well. Just from that day, they were like, yeah. he's Superman. And I decided, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to tell them because I want them to understand the sacrifice that these folks make. And Keyword. So, yeah, I showed them, hey, remember this guy in this photo with you guys? They're like, yeah, our pilot. I'm like, well, he was unfortunately killed today, you know, or a couple days ago in the Mediterranean when his helicopter went down. But then I get a call. I was looking forward to some time off for the 4th of July because we're touring so hard right now. And his wife Facebooked me and said, hey, when Shane was killed, we got his iPhone and we saw his most streamed artist was you and his favorite song was Bury Me By The Bonfire. Wow. I don't think I could afford you, but what would you charge to play our yearly event on the 4th of July at our house for Charlie Company? And I was like, 
first of all, not a dime. Second of all, I know what I'm doing for the 4th of July. So now we got our friends at Black Rifle Coffee. We're bringing a food truck, coffee. Now it's gone up to like two or 300 soldiers are going to be in their backyard. And we're just setting up and just rocking. And the whole oh. thing is covered for Samantha. And, and she has two little girls. Really sad deal. But I want to mm. just celebrate him and what his sacrifice and thank the other guys from that unit. So That's amazing. And thank you for being yeah. that kind of artist right there. And my daughter and uh, her boyfriend, they love Black Rifle Coffee. Yeah, it's good <laughs> stuff. But, man, that's a message you get if you read that. Like, you're like, I, I know exactly what I'm doing for the 4th of July. All the right. other plans of relaxing in Montana just went out the window because it's not about me at this point. I love it. See, that's the most important part. And that's why it's good to have you as an artist because as an artist, you have a voice. And you definitely have a voice for good. So I thank you for that. Yeah, awesome. My pleasure to do so. Tell everybody how they can reach out to you on socials, on the web, buy your merch, check out all your stuff. and Yeah, uh, yeah. Tim on, at Tim Montana Instagram is where I post the most. Tim Montana Facebook, X, Twitter, whatever you want to call it. All that fun stuff. TimMontana.com. You can see me on the end of the Stain Tour right now. we got four shows left. Then I'll be out with Bush, Jerry Cantrell, Candlebox. New single, Savage, is out now. New music video dropped as well. And the full-length record coming July 12th. You can also check out my pepper sauce at whiskerbomb.com. Me and the Reverend Willie G have created that. And then we also have Wise River Club in Montana that me and Billy Gibbons are partners in as well, where rock and roll meets the Old West, wiseriverclub.com. I love it. And you did it in your radio voice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and your new song is freaking badass. Oh, thank you, man. And thank you so much. Well, thank you for being at Welcome to Rockville, and yeah. thanks for being on the Adventures of Pipe Man. Yes, sir. Thanks, Pipe Man. <laughs> Hey, this is Tim Montana, and you're listening to The Pipe Man on W4CY Radio. Sunsets on the only one. Thank you for listening to The Adventures of Pipe Man on W4CY Radio.